My job here at Land Reform Immigration, I'm a case manager and I'm also a paralegal for certain case types. I mostly assist the paralegal and the attorney on getting documents from our clients, answering any questions before we file the case. Once we file the case, my job is also to provide feedback, feedback and updates on the case as well, you know, calling to check up on additional information that immigration might request. As a paralegal, my job is to assist the attorney in putting together your case, making sure sure that, that we have all the evidence we need, that the forms are filled out correctly, making sure that you confident that we'll do a great job. The thing I enjoy the most about my work I do here at Lander Home Immigration is helping people be a part of their American dream. Most of our clients have either been in the United States for a long time, have recently arrived, and they're full of dreams and things they want to accomplish. So being able to be a part of that, being able to call our clients after their case is approved and telling them that they're approved and that they'll be able to, you know, uh, not live in the shadows anymore and fear of deportation or to travel back to their country to visit their family members after a very long time. I think that's my favorite part, you know, just being able to call people and and hearing how emotional people get after having waited so long. Most immigrants, when they leave their countries, they leave behind not only their home country, but family and uh, traditions, maybe jobs and or friends. Sometimes it takes years for them to be able to, to go back to that. And so I think that's my favorite part. I love hearing clients tell me, oh, I'll be able to go see my mom after 20 years or, you know, go back to my country after so long. I think that's wonderful that they get to do that. My story was a little different because I arrived to the U.S. when I was a kid, so I was not, I did not maybe face the challenges that a lot of our clients face you know, arrive into a new country, having to get a job and learn the language. But it was still, you know, I was I was a DACA recipient. So I live kind of like in fear of not knowing if like DACA was going to be put out, like they were not going to be issuing work permits anymore. Even after I graduated from college, I wasn't sure if I could even plan to have a career because I wasn't sure if I was going to be given a new work permit after the current one expired. But I also knew that there was thankfully a way for me to get a green card, but that meant having to exit the country and, and way outside like a lot of our clients do. And obviously that was something I did not want to do. I was nervous going back to a country that I really did not even know, but I did. It was worth it because in the end I got my green card. I understand when I call clients and tell them, even if it's just for a week when they go to their interview and see that what is, you know, they're nervous because they haven't been in Mexico Um in a long time. They don't know what's going to happen. They don't know if, it'll, if they'll get stuck out there. So I love sharing my experience with them. I like to tell them, you know, what my experience was like, where they can stay, uh, how far the hotel is from the embassy. So I've shared that with clients and they really appreciate that. And it's just really my way or, you know, I try to help them feel comfortable and let them know that it's okay. You're just going to go show up and you're going to be back in no time. You're going to be safe, right? Because we make sure that when our clients exit for their interview, um, they're going to be back. So we make sure everything's done correctly. Well, when I was in high school, back in 2012, I graduated high school and I knew I wanted to go to college and I knew I was going to go to college, but I did not know. I mean, I knew I wanted to go. I just didn't know how I was going to make that happen, you know, but it just so happened that that summer DACA was passed or put into place and I was able to benefit from that. So that opened a lot of doors for me. Like I was able to get a job. I was able to get a driver's license, help pay for my school and, you know, be able to dream a little bit. But again, with like some reservations because my dream at the time and well it's still my dream to become an immigration attorney and i lived in texas so states like texas don't allow DACA recipients to sit for the bar exam so that was still like a like another struggle that i was uh you know that I was facing certain jobs even when i was a teacher i had to jump through loopholes to be able to be to get a license, you know, to, to be a teacher, uh, even though I had gone to school, even though I had a legal status in the U.S. So even though it helped a lot and it allowed me to dream, it also put other, you know, obstacles, in, in, you know, in in front of me and I had to make a decision. I got my DACA after I turned 18, so I had to apply for a waiver. I decided to wait outside the U.S., you know, for that waiver to be approved and go through the consular process uh, through my parents. So, um, like I said, I, I had to be out 
outside of the U.S. for uh, close to three years. Uh, not all clients have to do that. It depends on uh, specific situations. So that's why it's important, you know, to meet with our attorneys so that they can evaluate that. But I had to wait outside for three years in Mexico, getting to know my country of birth. And it was scary at first, but it turned out to be really fun and I met a lot of people and then you know I met places I had only heard about uh you know I I went to my birthplace and I went and visited people that I didn't know and so whenever I finally got my interview to go to Ciudad Juarez and get my green card I was happy but I was also sad because now I felt like I was leaving something behind you know I had never having arrived to the U.S. as a young kid, I did not know what it was like to leave something behind. So in a way, mm -hmm. my story was like backwards. My home was the U.S. and I had to leave to go to another country, a country I didn't know. And, you know, I kind of felt like a stranger. I kind of felt like an immigrant in my own country. You know, once I was able to leave again and come back to the U.S. to come back home, I felt sad. You know, I, I finally kind of, I feel like I kind of understood what my parents probably felt when they left and what a lot of our clients feel so it was a bittersweet experience i feel like i was a tourist in my own country and then i feel like i did not fit in because i didn't have like the same stories that other people uh, other people my age had going to school or things mm -hmm. that they do in mexico i feel out of place but then at the same time it made me feel nervous we get a lot of our clients who we tell them oh now that you have your work permit now that you have your green card you can go to the dmv and get a license and we say that like an everyday thing right I think most people in the U.S. do that. And it's just like a simple thing. Sometimes we don't realize that for people going into like to a government agency and like dealing with things like that, you know, it makes people anxious. And I experienced that in Mexico because I had to go to places to get an ID, to get a license, to deal with the government. And I found myself like thinking about what I was going to say and asking people what I should say and asking people to come with me so they could help me. So then I kind of started to think like, is this what people feel like when they go to the U.S. and they have to do this type of things? They made me appreciate and it also made me understand. So I try when our clients call and they have a question about the DMV or the Social Security office, you know, just kind of guiding them from my experience, if I can do the research or help them make an appointment even, we do that as well. It's an everyday thing for most people, but when you're new to a country and you don't speak the language and you've never done it, on top of dealing with immigration, it causes anxiety and it's not fun. So my process was a consular process. So um, overall, I want to say it was like five years only because my I-130 was submitted a long time ago when I was a kid or a little older than that. And then the waiver took a while. Of course, the pandemic had a lot to do with it because I decided to leave at the beginning of 2020 without knowing there'd be a world pandemic that got in the way. And But overall, five years would be is the estimated time for a consular process. And sometimes it happens fast. Sometimes it happens kind of slow. It really does not have to do a lot with the type of case. It's just sometimes the processing times are high because things happen like a pandemic and immigration gets behind on cases. There are ways help for it to be expedited, but it's not always available. It's not available for all cases. So it depends. It just felt good to to get that little piece of paper in the mail that says welcome to the United States. Even though I had already been in the U.S., but it finally made me feel like I was a part of the U.S. because I guess growing up being in the U.S. I always felt American but I never and I, I mean it's still kind of weird because I'm not a citizen so it's still like I guess I'm permanently here but it's not like really permanent but it feels good when I went when I enter the first time with my green card the officer was really nice and he asked me a lot of questions and he was just like oh well welcome home you're you're back home right like this is your home this has been your home and that made me feel like I wanted to cry because I was like, yeah, this is home, <laughs> like, you know, and, and the fact that he acknowledged that, that, you know, that this has been my home and I should have never left or uh, shouldn't have been asked to to leave uh, or go through that, you know, it made me feel good. It made my um, my struggle uh, feel validated, you know, because we we all have a struggle maybe some others go through more difficult things you know i know i'm very blessed to have had this opportunity to get a green card this way i know unfortunately not all people have that 
it's just, I guess, a matter of, of luck and seeing what's available. Don't do it on your own because even though it seems easy, there are a lot of things that can go wrong. I'm not saying technically immigration or USCIS, it's not written into law that you need an attorney. However, everyone's story is different. Some people have a real simple case and some people have a, a complicated story. And even easy cases, sometimes they get handled by an officer who's just not having a, a good day and he makes it difficult and, and you don't want to deal with that. You don't want to be feel like anxiety and be pressured by deadlines and, and things that might come up. It's just better to have an experienced attorney and an experienced team take care of the case. With Lander Home Immigration, you're not going to worry about anything. Once we file your case, you know, we, we receive the same receipt notices and all the notices that you receive at home. So we're aware of every deadline that's uh, given to you. If they ask for more evidence, as soon as we get it, we start working on it. You don't have to call us and let us know, hey, I received this. We have it. And, and we're aware of it uh, most of the time when clients do call to let us know. Our attorneys are already working on the solution and uh, putting together a strategy to, uh, you know, respond to whatever it is that immigration is asking for. So I think that's what I love the most, you know, just uh, knowing that someone's taking care of me, someone's got my back. I have to worry about putting together a packet for immigration. You know, the only thing you got to worry about is providing the documents that we will request from you and, you know, we'll take care of the rest. I think having worked at other law firms, this is one of the only law firms where we don't ask our clients to translate documents for us. We have people that do that. And, you know, most of our staff speaks English and Spanish. And if we do have other clients with documents in other languages, we have ways to get those translations done as well. We we take care of everything pretty much. You just give it to us and we'll, you know, we'll work with what we have. And if we need some more, then we'll, we'll also ask. But it's a, it's a very easy process. All you got to worry about is getting everything to us.